And the, indi and the reason for this is because, you know, the way natural selection works. So um, for natural selection to, to function, you need to have three prerequisites, right? So a, a population has to exhibit these small variations in a trait, right? So that, you know, like, you know, like different color eyes or something like that, just small variations, right? And those variations have to be inheritable, so they have to be passed on from generation to the next. And those small variations also must lead to corresponding variations in the survival rates of individuals of that population. So you need to have all those three things going on in order to have this process of natural selection. So you know, if we th think about like the evolution of the, um, you know, of the eye, right? So you can have um, small variations that lead, you know, so like, you know, the, you know, the early versions of the eye would, could have just been just a few cells that can, um, that can be photoreceptors. And we saw that euglena, remember, it was just, it was, it was not really an eye, it was, but it had a few cells that could, uh, that could detect light. And you might have some variations in which, you know, you have more of those cells eventually, uh, a few more of those cells, and that would have been something that would have, might have improved the survival rate of an organism if it was just a little bit better, if they could, you know, if they detect a little bit, I don't know, uh, more variations in the light or something like that, or different colors or something like that, um, or, you know, if there's a point in which you could, you know, th there, there are these incremental improvements in the ability to perceive light and then perceive images, you could imagine that that could have an effect on the survival rates of those individuals that <coughs> that have those variations that are, that improve the, the, the ability to see. And so that would be the way in which the eye could develop into a very complex or, organ uh, very gradually. So um, the difficulty with the language, right, is you need to provide an explanation for how these small, what these small variations might look like in language and how these small variations, especially in the beginning, lead to better survivability, right? And so that's the account that's kind of missing um, in Pinker's account of natural selection. So he, he, you know, his, his argument here, I mean, he, he, he looks at some other non-human primates, you know, these chimpanzees, there was these ex uh, experiments with chimpanzees and bonobos, right? And he, and he uh, looks at some of these and he says, um, that that might provide us some evidence of the ability to acquire human language um, in other primates and might indicate some immediate intermediate stages in language development, right? But then he basically dismisses any of this evidence um, that apes and chimpanzees might have any aspects of human language. And he gives these examples, right? He, he talks about how they have no syntax, there's no dialogue, they're just imitating, uh, there's no sense of particular objects as a focus of particular words, um, and there's no ability to abstract from the immediate situation. I mean, he, you know, he gives a, you know, he, he, <coughs> he gives a transcription of, you know, one of these chimpanzees supposedly talking, and it just, you know, it's like, you know, me, banana, eat, and eat, banana, me, and banana, banana, right? It's like, it just, you know, he says, hey, this isn't language, right? He just wants a banana. So what, what, what's, what's, so, what's so human about that, right? And so um, the only example that he indicates that there might be some incremental ability to have developed some type of human language is this example of Kanzi, the one we looked at in the beginning of the course, uh, who learned language accidentally while the mother was being, um, being formally trained. Um, and he does admit this, this uh, Kansi's language ability is noticeably better than other chimps, but he still um, also is insisting that even Kansi is not anywhere near human language ability. And so he's basically saying, you know, this is just not evidence for us, and it, it doesn't provide us with any kind of indication of the evolution of language. This could be a problem for his theory, but he also is indicating that we don't have to have any evidence of forms of language in other non-human primates 
um, that could lead up to our form of language uh, because even though you know, his theory of natural selection would indicate that there must have been sort of earlier forms of language that would have eventually evolved through natural selection into what we have now as language, it's not necessary that those other earlier forms of language must be something that we can, we can see today in any existing animal species, right? He says those other species that would have used a, an earlier form of human language could have just all died out, right? In, in the same way that, you know, sort of the earlier species um, of, of elephants with, you know, with crude element, elephant trunks have all died out, and we don't have any examples of that in the in the current world, even though they must have existed beforehand, right? So, so his, you know, so you know, one of the things he's doing is he's indicating that this lack of any kind of language development in uh, in chimpanzees and bono, bonobos is uh, is not an argument against natural selection, um, but it's also, you know, it's he's also sort of um, kind of committed to not seeing Form, earlier forms of human language ability in, in chimpanzees because that would indicate that they would somehow have this kind of language organ or language instinct, which he's assuming that it, they can't really have as well either, right? So, um, so there is a kind, I think there's a, there's a kind of bias for him in, to, to dismiss those other forms of language even if th they might have developed for instance, in Kansi, because I think it would be worthwhile for him to look a little bit closer at Kansi uh, to see what's going on there. And so this is what Terence Deacon will be doing, and so we're going to be able to compare um, Deacon's approach to, to Pinker's. Um, so, you know, so, so finally, you know, to, you know, just to sum up his theory of language development, I mean, he just basically says, you know, the language organ was a, an organ, a, a module, right, uh, that developed um, through natural selection, so sort of, sort of toward language use by, end quote, by a revamping of primate brain circuits that originally had no role in vocal communication and by the addition of some new ones, right? So that's basically his thesis about the origin of language. So we're getting to sort of a modern uh, account of the origin of language uh, and insisting on natural selection, but a little bit short on details of how this might have happened, right? So. You know, there's this, he's just, there's this revamping of brain circuits, um, and, um, and he says that this, this early kind of brain um, could have been rewired only if the new circuits had some effect on, on perception and behavior. So, but it's, you know, there's no, there's no real account of how, how this might have happened, right? And, um, and so it's still kind of a mystery. I mean, he does indicate it must have happened, you know, sometime between four million years ago and 200,000 years ago, sort of the, 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 sort of the, when these different earlier non-human primates um, existed and must have, you know, been the ones that were passing on this sort of language trait. Uh, but he doesn't really have an account uh, of how this could have happened and how it could have happened gradually. And wh what, what are the intermediate steps? You know, what, what kind of a language would have been the early kind of language? You know, did we have a kind of I don't know, baby grammar, what kind of grammar would have been, or what, you know, what, what are we talking about here? He doesn't really have that account, but he does insist on natural selection. I mean, so he be believes in natural selection without giving us a sort of a, uh, uh, a concrete explanation for how it would have worked in this case, okay?